I hope you have had a wonderful week. Happy Saturday. You made it. You made it to Saturday. Now it's your time to unwind, reset, relax, and refocus. We have a lot to cover today, so let's jump right into it. Happy Self-Care Saturday, Soul Tribe. This is Shay Shanette, your friendly neighborhood international artist. Gang, gang. Thank you so much for being here. If you found this video, this is the right time that you need to see it. I hope that today's lesson in visualization techniques as well as our painting will help unlock and free some things for you that you really need freed up. Let's go, Soul Tribe. In today's video, we're going to talk about vision. Very specifically, visualization techniques that you can take with you into the next week. We're also going to do a quick, easy, fun painting of eye and vision. And this will help you just process these emotions and these things that we are discussing today. So, let's start with the supplies that you will need. Some of the feedback I received from the previous video was to really go in on the supplies and colors. I do want to reinstate, it's not about what you paint. Art is literally therapy. There is a whole segment in the art world of art therapy that helps your brain process some of these thoughts and ideas. And you can use art, the art of painting itself to help you do that. So grab your wine or drink beverage of your choice. I am not doing wine right now. I'm still on my own spiritual journey and I need to connect. So do keep in mind, if you are consuming alcohol, that does kind of disrupt the connection between you and God, source, spirit, whatever you identify with. Get you some juice like me, whatever you want to drink, or just some water or tea. Supplies you will need. You can purchase a very easy, inexpensive, palette to put your paint on. We are primarily using acrylic paints. Acrylics dry fast, they're easy to use. This is a canvas, eight inches by 10 inches. If you keep the plastic on, you can actually use this as a surface to put your paints on. Make sure there's no holes in the plastic that will make it seep through. But this is a great alternative if you do not have a, a palette to use to put your paint on. You will need paint brushes. You want to get paint brushes that are for acrylic. Three, four dollars maximum. You want to have at least three options of a small, medium, and semi-large flat brush. This is a flat brush. I recommend having at least three sizes of these as these are some of the easiest brushes for beginners to paint with, okay? You will also need a round brush. And then also you will need a small brush. You will need these for those tiny details we have to get into. Some of the things that I look for when I purchase my brushes is the softness and flexibility of the brush. When you're getting your brushes, the most important thing is do not get those cheap plastic bristled brushes. They will not work well for paint. As far as colors, I don't want you to be too weighed down on colors. Two colors you will always need when painting with me is flat black and flat white. Those will be the base colors of our paintings. Also tend to use a black canvas I take a regular canvas and paint it black and I do my work in that space right now. You can also use a white canvas and your canvas don't have to be primed or anything special for this particular style of painting that we're doing for these sessions. You may choose any colors that you want. What's more important to me is the values and tones in these colors and I can help you adjust those. The most important thing that I need you to keep in mind when you choose your colors is the warm color versus the cool colors. That's actually more important in this paint process than the actual colors you select as far as the pigmentation. So we do use a variation of those and if you need more information on these specific painting principles, I highly recommend you join me on Patreon. Yes, I'm doing an early bird special on Patreon, $10 a month, and you'll get access to more of these tools and classes where I go over warm versus cool colors in depth, 
Some of these painting techniques that you may really want to get into and don't have time to do, I'll break them down into simple terms that you can follow along with and make it so much easier for you to execute. My Patreon launches on my birthday. That is my gift to everyone to have access to me, Q and A's with me, also soul information, more of that work, more in-depth topics on healing yourself will be on my Patreon as well. Aries team, gang, gang, we out ya. Back on topic. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. April 14th, my birthday. Send your girl some love. If you want to support me with a birthday gift that also gives back to you, join me on Patreon. Okay, fam, that covers the basic. Let's get into it. All right, Soul Tribe, we're talking about visualization today. What does that mean? So many times you hear these spiritual terms thrown around, all this spiritual jargon, and we don't really understand what that means. Who are you? What do you see when you look in the mirror? If you don't see yourself, no one else can see you either. So let's breathe. Reset, renew. Today we're talking all about visualization and using these techniques to help you see the life that you want to see. Let's go. Okay, so tribe, let's get into it. I'm using a pre-used canvas, just recycling, and I painted over that image. It was ugly, so it's okay. With some black, and that will be the canvas that I use today. We are focusing on vision. I want to show you how to paint a very easy eye. If you haven't looked up the meaning of the eye of Horus or Haru or Ra, do so, Soul Tribe. There is so much in symbolism that you can learn from. So for today's painting, we're really channeling the energy of this eye of protection, health, and restoration and these are the things that i want you to focus on visualizing while we work together don't forget your water in an old jar or vase that you don't care about make sure you have some paper towels on hand in case you make a little bit of a mess we have everything set up if you do not have an easel to use that is okay you can paint flat on a table you can tape your canvas to the wall whatever it takes to get it done okay so let's go ahead and get started with the outline of our eye. Um, the color you want to go in with first is white and then we'll mix our own gray or you can also use a pre-mixed gray. Place a little bit of white onto your palette and here I want you to treat this like a watercolor even though we're using acrylic. Take some water in your brush and from here i'll refer to loading your brush so if um, the job is to pick up paint or pick up water i'll say loading so we just loaded our brush with some water mix that into your white all we're doing here is thinning out that white paint to make it just a bit more translucent we're doing that so that you have space to make mistakes again if you don't have a palette for your paint you can also use a canvas that still has the plastic cover add you some paint there load your paint with some water dilute it and you're still good to go i want you to make sure this is centered as a um, rectangle and not a square i want you to have enough room to create your eye it's a little bit too short this direction go ahead and make sure that's rectangle okay let's go and uh, you're using just the very corner of this brush for the moment just the corner Find your center line, go down to center, make a dot. That's it, easy peasy. Make a dot, that's all you need. Go across, not at the edge, leave yourself some room, make another dot, and the same here. Now you have your three focal points to make this eye. Go ahead and reload your brush with some white paint and we're going to make a big sweeping arch don't overthink it it does not have to be perfect go from this dot now you do want to round it off here so use this center line as your peak 
That's your peak and your taper down here. Let's do it. Now you have the top of your eye. Step two, we're going to do the bottom of your eye. Now for the bottom eye arch, you don't want it to be as arched. Think more of a smoother oval. Look at my eye. We're going to do a less arch instead of a big swooping one like we did for the top of the eye. Come in right here and you do just a little U. Do you see that little U? Just a little U. Swoop down, gently go around and close. That's it, you have the basics of your eye already. So let's just go over our line and make it a little darker. It's perfectly fine. If your line is not smooth, we'll work through that together, okay? You should have the basics of an eye right now. And let's talk about what you should be visualizing. Who are you? Who do you see yourself as? I don't mean who you are right now in the 3D world. Who do you foresee yourself as? That's what you want to visualize every day, almost to a fanatic level. You have to see it literally until you believe it. I want you to also clean out your brush here and we're going to pick up some other colors and start building out this eye. You can use a pre-mixed gray or you can mix your own gray with just black and white. Let's do that now. If that gray is too dark, go ahead and pick up some white. Keep mixing until you get the consistency of gray that you want. One thing to always keep in mind and a secret to making a very realistic eye you cannot use just blank white. There are so many colors in your eye, not just white. So gray, use that dark gray to really get in here and build out this eye. So I don't want you to pull your gray all the way into this corner quite yet. I want you to close it off. We're going to leave room for that little pink area of the eye. So put your gray right in here. You're making just a half circle swoop, just a half circle, okay? Go ahead and keep filling it in. Now, right here, before we go too far, let's do the outline for our iris. Um, the key to doing an iris is do not try to make a full circle. You cannot always see a full circle in someone's eye. So we want to do a portion of that circle. So let's do a half circle starting at the top. Take a swoop. Okay, easy enough. You got this, you're doing a great job. So that's the outline for your iris. Let's go in and fill in this dark gray color, okay? It doesn't matter what color gray you use. The one thing I do want you to keep in mind is we're going from dark gray to a darker gray. And then use your lighter gray around your iris. So let's go ahead and do our dark gray color scheme first. And if you need it darker, just go ahead and pick up some more black and mix it with your white. You're still using your flat brush here. Long sweeping brush strokes. Go ahead and keep sweeping till you blend it in. So two areas, I hope you can see this okay. Two areas that I want you to keep pretty dark is at this top part of the eye. Let's keep that dark. At this bottom part of the eye, keep that as a nice dark gradient on both sides. You want to keep this area at the top part of the eye a very dark gray. Keep those two parts very dark. Okay. 
And it's perfectly fine if you get onto some of that line work, it's okay. That line is just our guide. It is not our end all be all. And go ahead and just keep filling in that dark, keep filling in that dark. Nice, smooth gradient here, a nice, smooth blend. Okay, let's go ahead and use some of our lighter gray. So mix more white with your black if you're mixing your own grays. Going to go in and add these lighter gray highlights. But I want you to stroke it out and blend it until you have a nice gradient. So you're doing nice, easy, long strokes. You can also load your brush with just a little bit of water to go in and blend those. So blending is you're just sweeping, sweeping, sweeping until you get a nice gradient. So I want this to go from a light gray here to this darkest gray at the base. Remember to keep this area dark and keep this bottom eyelid area dark. Um, it's a little bit too dark for me. I'm going to lighten it with some more white here. Okay, let's lighten up this eye a bit. Again, keep those dark parts dark, keep these light parts light. This side of the pupil, go ahead and lighten that up too. Now let's just go back in with our dark so we can iron out the details. Give yourself a nice, beautiful gradient. Do some nice, loose strokes. We want to see your brush strokes here. And let's lighten up this eye. Remember, don't go all the way to the top or the bottom. Let's just lighten it up. Very good. Great job, Soul Tribe. You should have the basic outline of an eyeball. Look at you. I shall call you an artist. Let's go, you're doing a great job. Being an artist, being in the branding and marketing field, I completely understand how powerful visuals are. What you see is literally what you see. So as we're doing this piece, I want you to keep in mind, protect your eye gate, protect what you allow yourself to see. Quick story time. Last week I did a consultation, a spiritual consultation with a client who was just struggling with multiple issues. In the background during this consultation, I could hear the television going and it was playing like a uh, Mori. I don't know if you remember Mori, but old school, um, old school talk show that's all about drama, right? And so if you're constantly feeding yourself, listening to visuals that are not productive, they are counterproductive to the spiritual level that you're trying to get to, you're getting in your own way. Now, I am not saying all television, all entertainment is bad. What I'm saying is sometimes you have to step away from it, step back from it and not allow your eye gate to see these things that are not feeding your spirit and your soul. So if you're binge watching court shows, Mari, all these different things, soap operas, these are dramatic images that you are now soaking into your spirit. You're soaking them into your mind. And then the next day you find yourself operating in the same energy of what you just watched. Protect what you watch. Protect what you see. Imaging is a very powerful tool. 
art, painting, what you create is a very powerful tool. So as you're making this, I think about the things that you want to feed your spirit, find a way to focus on those things for a while. If you need to take a TV break, take a TV break. If you need a social media detox, do a social media detox. Either way, protect your eye gate, protect what you allow yourself to see. Let's go ahead and do some more details on this eye. I want you to pick up some red paint or pink paint, any color. We're going to work on those inner parts of the eye. Let's go. So for me, I'm using a pink paint, but I'm still in my neon phase. So I'm going to use some hot pink. I'm going to switch brushes now. Go ahead and put your flat brush into your water and let that clean. I want you to pick up a rounded long brush so we can get into these tiny cracks and crevices of your eye. When you play around with the red coloring in the eye, you're actually playing around with emotion. So for example, picture an eye that has been crying. How much pink would there be? How much red would there be? Would you see any veins in it? Picture an eye that has been laughing and smiling. How much red would there be? Would there be any veins in it? It's up to you. This is your self-expression. If you want to make a sad eye or a happy eye, that part is up to you. But when it comes to the red, a little goes a long way. Red, pink, whatever color you're using for this eye corner. Let's go ahead and go in. Mix a little bit of white with your eye color. And let's get into this corner. Go ahead and just add that color. Add that color, sweep it out. It's okay if it's messy. Let me um, zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Round it off in here. Okay, I'm going to use just a bit of a darker pink now. Mix it with a little bit of black if you want, or dark red. Mixing with black isn't the best, but um, for this particular demonstration, we'll go ahead and stick with that. Go ahead and take that darker color of pink or red, whatever your eye corner color is, and wrap it around this part. Just kind of wrap it into there. Now go ahead and do the same thing with the top portion and those bottom portions. You're just darkening it up a bit. And go ahead and pull it out into the eye. And this is where it's a little bit of your discretion of how light or how dark you really want that to be. I don't want my eye too red, so I'm just pulling out a little bit. All right, I want you to add just a little bit of this color to the back corner of the eye. Not much, not much, just a hint, just a hint. You only wanna add a hint. In fact, go ahead and load your brush with some water, dilute that color down a bit, and just blend it in. You just want a hint of it, you don't need a lot. Okay. You have now built out the major parts of your eye. Good job, I'm proud of you. You got this, let's keep going. Let's go ahead and get into the iris. Let's go ahead and make that beautiful iris shape. I want you to clean off your round brush, your long skinny round brush. Go ahead and clean that out. Take you some paper towels to wipe off the excess water. Load your brush with black paint. We're going to go inside this eye Look for the center and go ahead and make a small circle to form that actual pupil of your iris. It does not have to be perfect. Round it out. That's all you need, a nice little pupil. Before this pupil dries, I want you to go ahead and grab some other colors. So I'm sticking with my purple, pink, neon theme. I'll be using these three colors for my eye iris. Some of these are cool and warm. I want you to load your brush with your cool light color and go around 
the outside of your pupil. I'm using the flat brush, just the tip of the flat brush here. That's all you gotta do. Now I want you to take that same flat brush and begin to pull on this. Take your flat brush and pull those colors down. Pull it all the way out, just fan it out, fan it out. You don't want it a lot of it, you don't want it too dark, you're just pulling literally pulling the paint you put down and pulling it out, fanning it out around this pupil center. Like a nice pretty flower. Go ahead and clean out your brush. Take some of those same bright colors, load your brush with those same bright colors. Go to the outside of your eye and we're going to make a nice little line with that same bright color. And just follow it through, keep going, follow it through. So you're just doing the outside of the eye, you don't want to touch that top area. Using the tip of your brush, using the flat square tip of your brush, I want you to go in and make some really nice lines. Just pull it out as if you were painting petals on a flower. They can be wild, crazy, all over the place. They don't have to be perfect. If you look inside the eye, there's nothing perfect in there. It's a wild, tangly mess. Go ahead and add these little lines all in your eye. I want you to also take this darker color and you're going to do another line around the light line you already created. Go to the outer circumference, create a nice dark line over just the outer side of the light line you created. Giving it just a little hint of depth. Now you can take this darker color and go across this top eyelid portion and then I want you to just pull it in to your painting. Pull it in. Last but not least, let's apply our third and final color, which is going to be a medium color in between the two. So you have a light color, a dark color, and your medium color. Go in and do some long swipes to add that color. Do it very random, very random long strikes to add this color in. Make it as random as you want. Okay, you should have a very cute but messy little eye come into life for you. Let's go ahead and wash out our brushes now. So one thing I do wanna do that'll help your eye just be a, have a little bit more depth is let's go in with some of our darker color at the top part. So think of your eyelid as a shadow casting onto that iris. And so this top half would be just a little bit darker and the bottom half would be a little bit lighter. So let's go in with our dark warm color. And let's just add some of those details. And you don't want to do the whole eye. You just want to add some of these dark details, like a shadow. Use your brush to just pull it down a bit. Just pull it down just a bit. Now we'll do the opposite with the bottom. Let's go in with our lighter color and brighten it up a bit. How we doing? Check in. How you doing? Are you hanging in there? I hope you've made it this far. Congratulations if you have. You're doing a great job. Don't ever give up on yourself. If you don't believe in you, who will? I believe in you. You believe in you. And let's do this. Okay, let's go into the bottom and go ahead and lighten up our iris just a bit more. Long strokes into the eye.
it's time to pick up this same dark color here and we're going to start forming our eyelids. Switch brushes, long round brush, let's switch. Pick up your dark color. Let's outline this eye. Stay on the inside and we're going to create some lips at the top and bottom to outline our eye. Follow along with me, creating a nice dark outline for your eye. Very good, that's all right. We're going to do the same thing at the top. Nice, dark, dramatic line. You should have a nice line to separate your eye from that white on the inside that you have created. Okay, that's beautiful. Now let's go in with the lighter color, your mid color, and let's create the rest of this eyelid. I'm going to switch to a smaller uh, flat brush. Uh, I already got paint on my face every time. Can I ever make it through without getting paint on my face? Let's take your mid color flat brush, a medium or small, and we're going to create a little bit more to this eye. So I don't want you to go on the outer corners of the eye, not here or not here. We're just going to do this top area and this bottom area. Okay, follow along with me, let's go. And we'll do the same at the bottom. How are we doing, Soul Tribe? Y'all all right? Y'all okay? Let's go ahead and clean this up. It does not have to be perfect. Perfect. Perfection is not the goal. Go ahead and pick up your flat brush again and let's get this closed on out. Don't forget to email me your pictures. I want to see what you created. I have three so far. The more pictures I get from this, I will eventually put together a compilation video and show off your guys' wonderful work. It can be anonymous. You, we don't have to add your name to the video, but please, I want to see what you create. Email me, shayshanette at gmail.com. Just email me, shayshanette at gmail.com. All right, let's finish this up. We're going to create an eye lip, an eye bottom, the eye of Haru, and we are done. Let's go. Load your brush a bit. Pull that dark, dark, dark color that you're using. We want that dark color that you're using. And let's go ahead and make some formations around this eye. Shall we begin? Let's begin. Take that big flat brush, open that big flat brush up, and make some nice long sweeps. That's all you need. Nothing too fancy, not too hard. We're just giving this eye a little bit more depth. Take the very darkest color that you have. And it's okay if you touch a bit of the eye, you just want to sweep back and forth and let it blend in a bit, okay? Same sweeping, big sweeping movements at the top of the eye, same thing. 
just pull it out. Let's pull this eye out. Keep a little space in between. You want light, dark, then to your color. So keep that black background or that white background. And let's just pull this eye out a bit more. I want you to take your mid color, a little bit of that lighter color, and create a crevice right up in here. And now let's blend it. Blend, 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 blend away. Okay, so Tribe, let's go ahead and wrap it up and get into the last elements for this art piece. I hope you are feeling well. I hope you are visualizing and setting your intentions of who you are, what type of life you are creating. Who do you see yourself as? What body weight do you see yourself as? What type of smile do you see on your face? What type of joy? Visualize the man or woman that you want to be and then think of that image on a daily basis. See it. See it until you believe it. What you visualize, what you see, what you watch is what will become your reality. You have all the power to control and create your own reality. Let's go. It's time for some fun. Let's add these eyelashes. If you are using a white canvas, you should use black for your lashes. If you are using a black canvas like me, you can get creative and make white eyelashes or you can use one of your three colors for the eye. I'm going to actually use the um, mid-tone. Yeah, I'll use the mid-tone to create my lashes. Let's get into it. Go ahead and use your flat brush, load your paint. And you're going to focus on using just the tip of that brush, not the whole brush like we did to make these sweeps. Use just the tip. The thing about eyelashes is don't get too caught up on making them all perfectly go the same direction. Eyelashes are messy all over the place. They cross each other. Some go to the left, some go to the right, and you always want to make fuller lashes at the top and a very thin layer at the bottom. So let's go ahead. You want to take the very tip of your brush, hold your brush towards the end, okay? Wherever you feel comfortable, but don't hold your brush here. Pull it down so that you can get that sweeping motion in your wrist. To make the lashes, you want to do a sweep down and up movement. So say it with me, down and up, down and up. Let's start here. Use the tip of your brush. Going down and up. This brush is a little big, but that's fine. Down and up. Just keep adding that. It doesn't have to be a big dramatic down. But you want to get that sweep in motion going down and up. Now on this, go ahead and pull it out. Pull those lashes out. I'm going to switch to my round brush. We should have switched to this one. It's a little bit easier. Go ahead, down and up. However long you want them to be, however short you want them to be. They should be crossing all over each other, all over the place. Eyelashes are messy. You can make them as thick or as thin as you want. And let's go ahead and add just a few floating eyelashes at the bottom. Now for the bottom lashes, we're kind of doing the opposite direction. You want to go up and down, up and down. Not too much into your eye space, but just a little up and down action. And remember, you can make it messy. They're overlapping. They're crossing each other. They're all over the place. And you don't want a ton of these at the bottom, just a few. Mm -hmm. 
All right, go ahead and play with it. You can add some dark lashes for depth. You can add some light ones. Let's just play with this. See how you feel, how you want it to look, and let's do it. If you're doing a male eye, you just want to shorten the lashes. You don't want them as long. If you're doing a woman's eye, you can make them as long and graceful as you would like for them to be. I'm going to go in with a little bit of dark just to give it a few dark lashes in there for depth as well. Just a few dark ones, not that many. Just a few to bring it on home, bring it on to life. We're almost done, Soul Tribe. Look at you, painting like a pro. I'm so proud of you. Okay, let's go ahead, clean your brushes, and let's add some white highlights to just really accentuate this eye. Keep it simple, use your flat, rounded brush. Um, Usually in art, using stark white and stark black are, are no-nos, but for this particular art, we're not going for realism, so let's go ahead and just use our stark white for this eye reflection, and um, I think it will turn out great. Let's do it. Go ahead and load your brush with some white paint, and go ahead and take you a small, long brush as well add a few details to make it pop you don't need much a little goes a long way we just want to make it look like it's wet in here just add a few random lines I want you to take this same long skinny brush and I want you to add just one or two or three strokes into your lashes follow one of your lashes and just add a little detail you don't need much, and even less at the bottom. Follow one or two of your hairs and just add a little bit of this white detail. It's just giving it a little bit of rounded out reflective property. Switch brushes. Go ahead and get your big round brush, and I want you to add some white strokes using the tip in your eye and stay towards your center. You don't wanna to go to the top, you don't wanna to go to the bottom. We're just adding some white glossiness to the eyes to give it that gloss look. Now let's add some reflective dots in here as well. Take your blush and you're going to use the whole brush and I want you to start at the top. That's it. Now let's do one more right underneath and I want you to drag a little further. One, two, three, let's go. Oh, baby, look at that reflection in your eyes. I see heaven in your eyes. Don't get me started. Okay, and I'm going to just smooth this reflection out. I want it to trail off a bit. So I'm pulling it again. Pull that paint you just placed down. Go ahead and pull it out. Very good. Let's add a thinner reflection right over here on the inside of your pupil. Use the tip of your brush and just add a thin little reflection line in there for a little bit of depth. And then I want you to go across the base of this eye at the back end and you're going to make a long, thin, skinny line to add a little bit more reflective quality and depth. You, it's okay to break up your line a bit. You're just giving, rounding out this pupil a bit. Okay, Soul Tribe, you now have completed your very first eye. I'm so proud of you. You did an excellent job. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. The takeaway message that I want you to take into this week is protect what you watch, protect what you're feeding your eyes, and then visualize the life that you want. Visualize 
who you see yourself as and allow it to become your reality. Again, if you want more really guided tips on how I do my visualizations, join me on Patreon. I'll be going into my step-by-step -step methods of how I visualize, what time of day I visualize, things that I create to help me keep my eyes on the prize. Thank you so much again for being here. I love your feedback and comments. Continue to share them with me. Share with a friend who may be stuck in the home today who needs to do some creative work to help them break down some of the things they're going through. This is why I do this. I love you. Have a wonderful week. You got this. Visualize the life that you want. This is Shay Shanette, your friendly neighborhood international artist. Take care of yourselves and take care of someone else. Cheers.